Hello everyone, welcome back to my little corner of the world where I'll be introducing a new series on this channel called the Otaku Shoreline Discoveries. This is a new series where I'll be sharing cool anime and otaku related content that I just discovered I haven't heard many people talk about and decide to share with you all just because. Or bury at the real reason why I'm even doing this in the first place. Sometimes I just want to talk about series that I'm completely late to the party on, alright? Like, for example, I really want to talk about interspecies reviewers at some point, even though it's completely irrelevant right now. But I'm not here to talk about angel dicks and degenerates now, am I? though I would like to at some point. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about Blue Period, a manga series created by Tsubasa Yamaguchi. I first found out about this manga based on, well, you guessed it, Twitter. It was recently announced back in January that this manga series would be getting an anime adaptation in the near future, and when I looked it up, I thought, yeah, this seems like some shit I'd be into, so now I want to talk about it now that I'm caught up on the manga series currently. So what's Blue Period? What's this manga about and why should you read it? Well, it's about a high school kid named Yatoru Yaguchi, your typical anime protagonist power structure of being popular, smart, and cool, and a delinquent, edgy teenager type of character. But he's also completely dead inside due to a lack of passion and direction in his life, so that's like one of the only things that makes this kid relatable at first for me. Now, each chapter of this manga actually packs in a lot of meat, so at first I was ready to punch this kid in the face, but then I had to remember, okay, I gotta keep reading the chapter before I can say whether or not I like this character, because he does slowly develop into a different character as the chapter progresses, but like I said, they're pretty hefty chapters. Now, Blue Period's title, in case you didn't know, is a giant reference to a series of paintings created by Pablo Picasso between 1990 in 1904. I'm pretty sure I forgot to mention this, but I'm bringing this up because of two things. One, this whole entire manga is about art and the process of becoming an artist. And the other reason that I bring this up is that this manga heavily takes on themes such as depression, anxiety, and other forms of mental health. And yeah, it also deals with like the importance of art and why we create. Oh yeah, and just in case the title didn't beat into your head that this is a reference to Pablo Picasso, they will name drop him whenever they can, so yeah. What I didn't expect from this manga was like a sense of nostalgia from my early years of becoming an artist and that journey I had to go through to get where I am. And even though I made it in a way, there's a whole lot that I have left to learn and so do a lot of great artists. But man, I still remember have similar feelings to Yatoro when I was his age when I first discovered why I loved art. Oh man, that feeling of when the people around you basically say, holy shit, that's not bad. It's a thrill of genuine and praise through something that you can only communicate through your hands. But also, even the hesitation in wanting to pursue something as hard to get into as art due to preconceived notions, like it's a dead-end career or I'm not talented enough to become an artist. And especially from the parents, because there are a lot of people who want to become artists, but little do they know how hard it actually is to make it a career. It's similar to YouTube, where it looks easy and anyone can do it, but only a very few select people thrive. And just look at this stupid $1,200,000 banana! Ah! But the fascination of the craft and that feeling of true praise brings him to an emotional conclusion that this makes me happy. And this kid goes through all of the trials and tribulations to get into this prestigious art school that has super cheap tuition, but it's also really hard for people to get into. Now, I'm going to be going into spoiler territory here, but the main thing I respect the hell out of this manga for is the fact that our main character, uh, yeah, he ain't perfect, folks. This ain't no Kirito Isekai bullshit over here. He's good, but he's not like so good that he suddenly automatically chosen one territory where everybody's suddenly amazed at how professional and skilled he is, even though he's never really done art before. Nah, there ain't no bullshit like that here. They give this boy a realistic form of growth and skill. For example, in an early chapter, he goes to the art club and participates in a critique. Whereas some of these students who have been there for longer and have developed many skills and want to be artists are being treated, well, like actual art students during a critique where they are given tips to improve their own skills. Meanwhile, our boy over here is all, hey, what about me? Ah, uh, nah, here bro, you tried. Here's a golden sticker. And this pisses him off. 
This boy goes to a fucking artist cram school and he's trying to claw his way up from the bottom just so he can attend. Also, there's this girl whose painting kind of inspired him to even take art in the first place. And this girl is friggin' talented. But when she applies for her dream college that our boy also wants to go to because of her, and I mean like, that's the only college he wants to attend to. Yeah, the first time we see her apply, she gets the bottom five. But yeah, that gives us, the audience, a perspective on how hard it is to get into this particular program at this school. But yeah, if you've been following my art progression for a very long time now, then you will know what I mean when I say that I absolutely relate to this main character, oh my freaking god. So before this anime comes out either later this year or next year or whenever it releases, it hasn't been announced when it would be released. But yeah, I hope you guys check out the manga, especially if you're an artist. Please check it out if you're an artist. Not only is it entertaining, but it also gives a lot of insight into the art industry and, well, you know, you can brush up on some things such as composition and color theory if you need to. Especially if you're a new artist, I mean, those are good skills to have. Anyways, that's it for today's Otaku Shoreline Discoveries. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for more notifications of upcoming videos, and also let me know what you think of the series in the comment below. It is a bit of an experiment, but I hope that I can do more videos like this in the future. So I'd appreciate some feedback in that regard. Also, special shout out to my patrons, especially my Cosmic Rainbow Dragons, Cal Christensen, Grim Baby, and Omega Jared X. Also, a bit of an update, folks. I did some new rewards and made some new icons for my Patreons. And even if you're not planning to donate, I'd appreciate if you would all go check that out. These eggs came out super pretty. Oh my god, I am so proud of myself, especially with the old egg design being as boring as it was. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye bye <laughs>